Hi folks. Well, guess what? I think I could get these stall doors open. Hi, I'm BJ Rickard. Welcome to another Stall 13 video. Okay, we've talked about defrosting tanks, why you need to do it, the right way to take the ice off, but what if you have an electric tank heater? Electric tank heaters are great. I've talked about them on the show, and I'll be talking about them on the radio show again every Sunday night. Uh, but they can omit just enough of an electrical charge in the water, not necessarily to kill your horse, but just to deter them from drinking water. A horse's tongue, their lips, their nose, their whole face is much more sensitive than our own faces and lips and tongues are. They have a better sense of smell, a better uh, sensation for taste. They have more taste buds per centimeter than we do. They're just across the board. They're just a much more in tuned, more sensitive um, being than we are. Okay, this is another stall here at the home place at the ranch. This is a bigger tank. Now this tank happens to have an electric tank heater in it. Um, I want to show you the electric tank heater, but um, I've got gloves on because the temperature's dropping. It's getting colder out here, not warmer. Um, just bear with me. I got to get something to pull that heater out of there. Hold on. Be right back. Just stay with me. I got to find something. Oh yeah, here's what I'm going to do. Just going to cut a piece of fence wire. All right. Wait a second here. All right. Obviously, this is unrehearsed, or you <laughs> wouldn't be chopping off a uh, fence wire. Okay, I got a piece of fence wire here, number nine wire. I use this on H braces. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the tank heater out of the bottom of this tank. This tank is about a 150 gallon tank. It's oval like a racetrack. And what you do is, is I'm going to grab the cage, not the heating element. The heating elements on electric tank heaters are just like an electric cooking stove in your kitchen. Okay, here it comes. Here's the cage or the baskets it's in. Notice we got some leaves and we got some junk that we can clear out of the tank as well. Keep the tank uh, as clean as possible. Here's your heating element. About once a month during the winter you want to unplug this, let it cool down, and you can scrub this with an SOS pad or anything like that. This is a heating element. I don't know if you can pick it up or not but there's actually steam coming off of this heating element right now because it's outside of the water and the temperature is showing it. See it's steam? That's how hot these get. Okay, hopefully that's picking it up. I'm going to set this back down in there, hopefully without breaking it. You know, as much as I love these tank heaters, folks, they are really kind of a delicate item. People think they're invincible. They're not invincible. It's real easy for them to short. It's very easy for them to break. It's very easy for them. I'm beating it right now because the heating element kind of got over to one side on the cage. It's very easy for them to mess up. That's why it's extremely important that you take the time to uh, make sure that these tank heaters are properly installed and used. Okay, this is a metal tank with a submersible heater. Folks, what I'm going to tell you now, this applies to every tank heater there is. Whether it's a submersible one, like the one in the bottom of this tank, whether it's one of those that floats around on top, the red and the blue and the green ones, like a fishing bobber, or it's like one of those that screws into the drain hole on a water tank. They, this applies to them. Either you have to ground the water or you have to ground the tank. Something has to be grounded. Either the water has to be grounded or the tank has to be watered. There's no question about this. Some instructions come with tank heaters and they talk about it, but they really don't. And that's a shame, by the way. I think they should. Okay, here's what we're going to talk about. If you have a metal tank, you have a choice. You can either drill a hole and put a nut and a bolt and a washer right underneath this ledge. And by the way, I have to say this, drill your hole on the top of the tank and not the bottom. Many years ago on the radio show, somebody drilled a hole at the bottom. They said, my tank leaks water. You drill your hole up top. Once you have a hole through here, you put a nut and a bolt and a washer. You take your ground wire and you can secure it this way. What I've done here for safety's sake is I have my ground rod. And by the way, this is a seven foot T-post that's six feet in the ground. 
by all rights it should be an eight foot ground rod, but it's in there nice and solid. You can see how I have all the copper wire wrapped around this to make a good electrical connection. And then I have this clamp. This clamp is actually clamping the wire to the side of the tank. Now this is important. This is what you must do whether you have a, a galvanized tank, a bathtub, a plastic bucket, or a plastic water tank. As I pull this out, I have a brick and the wire is tap, uh, attached around this brick to keep the wire submerged in the water. It is to take the small electric, electrical charge out of the water, ground it. Now what this does, ladies and gentlemen, is this, what this does is, is this takes that small electrical charge out from the tank heater. Some tank heaters have it, some don't. Believe it or not, you can buy a brand new one and it'd be perfectly fine. You can buy a brand new one and there'll be a charge in the water. And you can feel it. And you put your hands in the water and you think the water is cold, but then all of a sudden you feel this kind of tingly feeling. And that's the electricity dancing on your fingertips. It might scare you, but what it does is, is it keeps your horse from drinking water. Now I talked about horses drinking water in the other uh, video when I was removing the ice from the tank. Whether it's hot outside, whether it's cold outside, water, water has to be consumed by a horse. And by the by, whether it's the dead of winter, the dog days of summer, a horse needs to drink, required to drink their body weight in water in a two-week period. Let me explain that to you. Over a two-week period, a horse should drink their body weight in water. If your horse weighs 1,000 pounds, you take 1,000 divided by 14. That's how many pounds of water a horse should drink in a 24-hour period. And, and factor in, folks, about 7 pounds per gallon is what water weighs. Just You can do the math. I'm not going to. It's important to ground this. Now, what we've done here is we've grounded this tank. Now, if this was a plastic tank, you wouldn't have to drill a hole in the side of this tank. All you'd have to do is have your ground rod in the, in the ground, have your copper wire coming up secured to the ground rod, and then um, take it and a rock, a brick, something that's going to sit on the bottom of this tank that's not going to infect the water. You don't want to use lead or anything that's rusty that'll, that will rust. And that keeps the wire down in there so that the wire is making contact with the water and it grounds the wa water. A good thing to do is to take the wire this is kind of thick, and you kind of coil it like an old-fashioned telephone wire because the more inches, the more area that you have your wire touching in the water, the better off you are. See how much more wire I've used in the same space coiled like this than if the wire was just going to be stretched out straight? That makes a big difference. This is something that you need to do. Um, like most of the videos you're going to see from Stall 13, they cover some pretty important things. And unfortunately, I wish we didn't have to. But sometimes this might be the only way that someone finds this information out. I hope this video has been helpful. You can watch more videos. You can listen to the show 24 hours, 7 days a week at, that's right, here it comes, www.stall13. Go stall13. www.stall13.com is the show's website. Take care of yourself, take care of your horses, and oh yeah, by the way, ground your water tanks. Please, if not for me, for your horses. Alright, it's about chore time, so I'm out of here.